Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Heater. Come on in. We're going to have us a good time because the Word always gives us the best time. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Um, I want you to turn with me today to Mark chapter 4. We're going to start reading in verse 23, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified Classic Translation. And uh, I want to see, recognize this is something that Jesus said to us. So we want to pay particular attention to it. In Mark 4, verse 23, Jesus said, If any man has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him perceive and comprehend. How many of you know he's not just talking about these ears on the side of our head? He's talking about having a hearing heart. That that our spirit, we hear with the ears of our spirit. Uh, that it lands in our heart. Amen. Amen. So he, he goes on in verse 24 and he says, and he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. Yes. Why is that? Because when you hear words, things land in you. Yes. So you want to make sure the right words are what you're listening to. Amen. You know how somebody can just tell an event or something that somebody said or something did and, and it lands in you. Right, right. You go, wow, that I, I can't believe they did that. Why? It landed in you. Right. Um, how much more the word of God will land in you, but how much more because God uses words to fill us. Um, the devil will try to use words to fill you with the wrong thing. He's an imitator of how God works because there's nothing original in the devil. So he's only an imitator. So he tries to, if I could say this, put words around you. You say, how does he put words around you? Through people, through people, uh, through what about this? Through wrong thoughts that the devil will offer you wrong thoughts. He's trying to get wrong words to land in you. Jesus said, be careful what you are hearing. That's why I don't just randomly click on things on my my computer to watch because sometimes something can be stated that you heard and it landed and you realize uh, later that wasn't quite right and it's hard to get it out sometimes. And uh, so I I pay attention to what I let go in here and what I let go into the ears of my spirit because sometimes it only takes a fraction of a second to get it in but longer to get it out. You know that if we, if you've been taught something wrong about the word, Mm -hmm. something wrong about some kind of doctrine. And if you hear that over and over all through your childhood, and then you hear truth come along, what happens that error will argue against that truth (laughs) and try to keep that truth from coming in because of what you've heard before. And sometimes you've got to, it takes some effort to keep bringing the word to people so they get, that they can recognize if there's error right. that they have heard and held to. Right. So um, Jesus made the statement, be careful what you are hearing. So we would say this too, be careful who you're listening to. That's right. That's right. Be careful who you're listening to. You know, um, there are people, precious people that we have around our lives, but you have to know who is it that seems to have God's words in their mouth for you. You give them a place of hearing that you won't just give someone that's a, that's a new acquaintance, someone you just recently met 
uh, you're, you'll be cordial to them. You'll be gracious to them. But when you take in someone's conversation and words, it becomes part of the way of what lands in you and how you think and how you speak. So be careful. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I, I know where God has, if I say connected me, who God's connected me to so far in ministry, what ministers God has connected me to. That's where I feed, where God has connected me, not just someone who's popular, but someone who I'm connected to by heaven. That's going to be where my best supply is. So Jesus is giving us this same instruction. Be careful what you're hearing. Don't just listen to anything. Amen. Be careful what you are hearing. Then he goes on and says this, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue or the word virtue is also power, will be the measure of power and knowledge that comes back to you. So he's saying this, that when you hear something, it's going to come back. What you put in is going to come out. So be careful what you're putting in because it's going to come out. And when you need the right, when you need help and you need answers, pour in the right thing in a great measure because then a great measure of help will come back to you. When we're faced with a need, when we're faced with circumstances, when we're faced with opposition, sometimes a minimal flow of the word going in is just not enough to help you overcome what's opposing you. So you have to make sure that the measure you're hearing the word is enough in a certain season. Um, Especially in times of opposition, double down on that word. At a time of need, double down on that word. That means take in more than you just would on an average day. At a time of opposition, the, the the enemy opposes you to try to change what you believe. That's right. That's right. He's trying to uh, interrupt right thinking. He's yes. trying to insert wrong thinking. Right. Why is that? Because wrong thinking opens the door to the devil, but right thinking opens the door to God. So the devil wants to, if I could say this, interrupt mm-hmm. right thinking and try to insert some error in it. Yeah. 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 Because he can't work until you think wrong. Know this, the devil cannot work against you when you think right. Because when you think right, you resist him. You recognize error. You recognize his strategies and you shut the door to him. But when you think wrong, you're susceptible to what the enemy would bring against you. So that's why it's so important that you be careful what you're hearing. Where do I feed? I feed, as I said, on those ministers that God has connected me to because he has something for me in that supply that is safe for my life. I don't listen to random things. That's good. Amen. Amen. I listen to where I'm connected. Amen. Where who your pastor is, that's who you should be listening to. Uh-huh. Teachers that feed you, that's where you should be listening. Those that feed you the word and help uh, bring you into greater light, not confuse you. But Jesus said, be careful what you're hearing. And then look at this, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth. Notice this, the the quantity of time, how much you pour in of that word plays a role in our victory. Um, In this room right here, you see a dark gray wall behind me. You see a cream color wall. When we were painting this studio, uh, my son is the one, my, my youngest son and I designed it. And my oldest son built it. Can't beat that, right? The family <laughs> doing it. <laughs> you got all your help there available to you. I like available help. Yeah. And um, so my oldest son is the one who painted this room. Well, I told him, I said, you know, can you get it done today? Yes, I can get it done today. When he came in, he gave a full, he gave a full measure of time to painting. Why? To get it done quickly. What if he had just come in, taken a roller and rolled one time on the wall, set it down, walked out? Well, he painted, but the measure of time he gives to it will determine how quickly it's, it's completed. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the word. The measure of time you give to the word will determine how quickly you'll pass through certain situations. If you only just have one little nod toward the word every day, taking that paint roller, doing one roll and put it down. 
you'll get the room painted, but it's going to take a long time. And by the time you get around to where you started, everything else may have been faded by then. Yeah. <laughs> Light can fade. Truth can fade when into, in the reality of your spirit when it's only randomly fed. So Jesus is talking not just about being careful what you're hearing, but the measure of what you're hearing. Hearing the word in a great measure is going to give you a great flow of the power of God flowing back into your life. So what can we do when we are faced with opposition? Make sure we're giving enough measure of time or measure of the word to our victory. That's good. Amen. 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 What's that mean? Give an all out effort toward the word. When you give an all out effort toward the word, just like when my son gave an all out effort toward painting this room, it didn't take long to get it painted. When you give an all out effort to the word, it won't take long for you to receive your answer. Amen. It won't Amen. take long. Amen. Don't think that it's got to take a long time. It doesn't. Amen. Things take long many times in our lives because of the measure of time we're giving to the word. Amen. Sometimes it's too small a measure of time. Sometimes we're not giving an all out attention, being wholehearted toward the word. Amen. 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 Uh, this isn't just what I'm thinking of. This is what Jesus <laughs> said. Amen. He said the measure. The measure. The measure of thought. What's he talking about? Meditating on the word. Uh, Letting the word, uh, thinking deeply into it. Speaking it to yourself. Turning it over and over in your thought life. Amen. Amen. Listen, your spirit needs the word, but your mind needs the word too. Now, the faith that comes to us through the word, that faith goes into our spirit. It doesn't go into our mind, but we can have faith thoughts yes. when we feed on the word. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. So the, Jesus said the measure of thought and study you give. Notice this isn't what God gives. This is what you give. Yes. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth, to the truth. You know what worry is? You giving a, a measure of thought and study to what's not true. Uh-huh. That's, right. That's worry. Mm-hmm. To what isn't of God's word. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of power and knowledge that comes back to you. So we're the ones who determine how great the flow of God's power is in our life, not God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. The more attention we give his word in our thought life, in our speaking, in our actions, letting it govern our daily actions, mean be a doer of the word. The more we do that, the more we're going to see the power of God come into manifestation into our daily life. Amen. Need more power? Give a greater measure of thought and study to the word. Amen. Amen. People say, well, I'm waiting for God to do something. He's waiting, to, he's waiting for us to measure his power back to us Amen. by giving our attention to his word. Right. Who would have known that your miracle was within your control? Wow. Amen. It is. Yes. By what we're listening to, by what we're feeding on, by the, the word we're pouring in and the word we're releasing. It's not enough to pour in the word unless we release that word we're pouring in. Amen. 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 I love something that my daughter-in-law, she was preaching in a recent service and she said, it takes no faith to hear the word. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing, Mm -hmm. but it's no effort of faith on your part for faith to come. All you have to do is hear the word. It takes no faith to to sit and hear. The faith is releasing what comes into your heart. Right. That's where our measure of faith comes into play. Amen. Right. Amen. So it's not just about hearing the word, it's speaking the word. Right. It's releasing the word. It's acting on the word, right. doing the word. That's right. Amen. 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 And that's what Jesus is saying. The measure you hear uh-huh. is the measure that's going to come back out of you. Right. You put a minimal measure of the word in, you get a minimal measure of the word out. Right. 
But if you, if you will make the word your lifestyle, you say, well, Pastor Nancy, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a minister. I mean, I work a job. Yes, but you know, on the way to work, you can be meditating on that word. Yeah. Uh, while you're on your lunchtime, you can pick up a book. You can pick up the Bible. You can pick up some kind of uh, Bible teaching book. That's you right. can turn That's on right. some kind That's of right. recording and listen. Yeah. You can keep take, uh, take advantage of every moment to have that word going in. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, when, you need a, a, when you need a miracle, you need the word. That's right. The word coming in and the word going out. Yeah. Acting on the word, speaking the word. One of the things we have to be aware of uh, in this faith life, because we live by faith. That's right. I said, we live we by live faith. By Why did God author it for his children to live by faith? Because that gives us the best life. Right. Gives us the best life. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whenever, whenever that word comes in, we begin to learn that there are certain words we shouldn't say, right? Yeah. Yeah. When you get, when you start feeding on the word, you realize there are things we should not be saying. That's right. Period. That's right. Right. Saying things like things like you know, uh, my, things just keep getting worse. It right. just, my finances right. are just getting, going from bad to worse. Right. Right. We learn in the faith life, don't say That's things right. like that. Right. It's right. sabotaging your faith. Yes. Right. It's undermining your faith. So we learn, don't, don't talk about the problem. Don't talk about all that the enemy has said to you. That's right. Address it, but don't give it, don't give it center stage in your life. Um, so in this faith life, we learn what not to say. But we have to remember the faith life is not just learning what not to say. It's learning what to say. So it's not just not saying the wrong thing, but it's also making sure we're saying the right thing. It's not just keeping your mouth closed to what's wrong, but it's opening your mouth to what's right. Amen. 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 And so the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of power and knowledge that comes back to you. You know, whenever, I love something that Sister Gloria Copeland said. She said, when you're doing everything you know to do and nothing's changing, you need to know more. That's good. That's, good. Good. That's what Jesus is saying. Yes. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of power and knowledge that comes back to you. So if you need to know more, you have to take in more. Yes. Take in more of that word. See, search it out, study it out, meditate on it, feed on it. Because when you know more, you receive more. You receive more. Amen. Amen. If you'll act on what you know. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. 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 So I so appreciate that Jesus is showing us to see many times people are under the impression mm-hmm. that it's up to God for everything we need to show up. Well, we know this. He's the performer. He's the manifester but he performs to the degree that we believe. That's right. He performs to the degree that we open the door to him. So basically this, he moves when we move. Uh, When we make a move, then he can move. But people are wanting God to move apart from them doing anything. And that's not scriptural. Many times people want all the responsibility on God, but Jesus is showing us the responsibility is on us. The measure of thought and study we give to the truth we hear will be the measure of power and virtue or power and knowledge that comes back to us. So what what does this mean? You send the word out, it's a boomerang effect. It comes right back in manifested power. Amen. So it does matter what we're hearing and it does matter how much of, of, of what we're hearing. That's right. That's right. The measure of what we're hearing. That's true. So he said, um, so the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of power and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. Mm. Ah, for to him who has will more be given. What's he mean? To him who has ears to hear. Remember, that's what he's talking about when he started. If any man has ears to hear. So verse 25 could read it this way. For to him who has ears to hear, will more be given. More what? More power, more knowledge. Will be given him. 
and from him who has nothing. What's that mean? Who doesn't have ears to hear. Mm-hmm. Even what he has will be taken away by force. Who, 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 do, who works by force? The devil. God doesn't work by force. God works by permission. Right. The devil's the one that forces his way mm-hmm. upon people. God doesn't do that. Right. So if we listen to the word, we get help. Right. If we don't listen to the, to the word, then ev- we don't receive the help that we need. Right. Amen. So we are the ones who determine the flow That's right. of God's power and God's help into our lives. Right. Don't think it's all on God's side to just, just dump help on us. He, mm-hmm. He's made himself available, but we're the ones that open the door to that. Mm-hmm. So you say, well, how do I open the door to him in a greater way? The greater place we give the word in our life, the greater the, the degree of power that will flow in our life. Amen. His power, his word is his power. That's right. <laughs> when you feed on the word, brother, you're feeding on power. Amen. You're wired with power. The Holy yeah. Ghost is on the inside of you, but we need to put a demand on that power. Power to conduct that into our need. And by feeding on the word, speaking the word, that power that, it, that it, we're wired with begins to flow. The power that is resident in the word begins to flow. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I could put it to us this way. How we treat the word determines how much we'll receive from God. Mm-hmm. That's, good. That's key. Yes. How we treat the word. Yes will determine how much we receive from God. All things belong to us, but just because it belongs to us doesn't mean we're receiving it. It's up to us to receive what he made ours. And how do we receive what he made ours? How we treat the word. How we act on the word. The place we give the word in our everyday life. Amen. Amen. It takes faith to receive miracles. So those who treat the word right will have a robust faith. Those who neglect the word will struggle in their faith life. Uh I don't want to struggle. Amen. We don't need to struggle in our faith life. So it's all up to how we treat the word. Mm -hmm. Dad Hagen used to say this to us. He said, it's when you get thrilled with the word that it works for you. When you get thrilled with the word uh-huh. that it works for you. Yes. What's he talking about? How you treat the word is going to determine how it works for you. Yes. Do you know being thrilled with the word is a choice? It's not a feeling. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's you choose right. to get excited Amen. at the opportunity Amen. to hear his word Amen. and the opportunity to take it in, That's but right. also the opportunity to act on his word. It's an honor to know how to act in line with the word. It's an honor. The world is full of people who don't know how to act in the face of a need, but we're taught how to, how to act in the face of of a need. And it's an honor to know that. I'll I'll tell off on myself. How about that? You you find out I do that a lot on this broadcast. (laughs) I tell off on myself uh, because uh, through my experiences, I can help you possibly. And, um, even how I did it wrong. I don't mind telling you how I did it wrong because uh, um, at least I'm learning how to do it better, right? Yes. How to do it right. But I remember years ago, I would have been, uh, well, it's almost 40 years ago now. And I was a baby Christian and I had heard enough about healing just to, <laughs> well, let me just say I was invited to know more. <laughs> but I didn't know that much about healing. And, uh, I remember that I was having symptoms for a period of time and, uh, I just, I was giving, let me just tell you what I was doing, what it's easy, a half hearted effort toward the word. That's what I was doing. How about that? What was convenient? What was, you know, I could just, uh, give a nod toward the word. And I'd said, Oh, I thank you, Jesus. You're my healer. But it was just, that's all, that's all the attention I gave to it. You know, just a nod. Yeah. And the symptoms kept persisting. And after weeks of this, I said to God, now, you understand 40 years ago in, in days of ignorance, uh, <laughs> I said to God, which shows my ignorance, he, why don't you just go ahead and heal me? Uh-huh. Like <laughs> anybody else? Or was that just me? Have you ever thought something like, yeah. please tell me I'm not the only ignorant yeah. one, which shows, you know, basically that word was... I, the way I worded it was, you're, you're not doing what you ought to be doing. Right. 
I was putting it on him. Yeah. Putting it on him. Wrong thinking puts the responsibility on God yes. instead of doing it. Man has a part to play in their own, in their own miracle. What is that? That's obedience to the word. And so anyway, I, was, I just said, basically under my breath, I said, why don't you just go ahead and heal me? In other words, that's like an employee that doesn't come to work, yes. hardly works, and they walk up and pay day. Won't you go ahead and pay me? Well, you haven't even done your, your part of the deal to get paid. We don't earn this, but we do have to cooperate with what he's made ours. So that's basically what I was doing with God. Why don't you just go ahead and heal me? <laughs> and God answered me back. Now, don't turn me off. Listen to me, the, the whole story. <laughs> he answered me back and he said, you're not hurting bad enough. He said, because if you were hurting bad enough, you'd do what you ought to be doing toward my word. Oh. Was God wanting me to hurt? No. Oh. He was saying, you're not interested enough. Right. That's what he was saying. Yes. And if it's going to take pain to get you interested, that's a bad, that's a bad place to to, to choose to go yeah, to. Right, right, Don't right, wait right. till you're in so much pain that you, you're forced into being interested. Oh, right. Choose oh, to be interested good. apart yes. from, from circumstances pressing on yes. you. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so I did what he said. I got interested yes. and I began to give an all out effort to the word. That means I made it a priority of my day, listening to the, the word being taught, putting it in my mouth. And I want you to know in a matter of weeks, every symptom was gone. Every symptom. Why? When I gave an all out effort, being interested in the word, the measure I gave is the measure of power that came back to me. Many people are waiting for God to measure things to them. And he's saying, measure it to yourself. It's wow. up to you. How That's interested great. you are, how hungry you are in my word. So we know this, how we treat the word is how the word treats us. If we give out all out effort to the word, we receive an all out flow of his power. We give very little interest toward the word. Then we are limiting what God's word can do in our life. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, we're just starting on this joyous journey here. And uh, I, maybe I'll tell off on somebody besides me. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> but you don't want to miss next time because we're learning together. Yeah. Amen. And so we look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. God has provided a way for His children to have ongoing visitations from Him. But many Christians don't recognize these visitations. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne inviting you to join us in Murrieta, California at World Harvest Church for our annual Holy Ghost meetings. The dates are January the 5th through the 10th. We're inviting everyone to go to our website at DufresneMinistries.org and register. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has already made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.